Hi reader friends, this is Mrs. Olson and today for your library lesson we are going to work on learning how to make notes. We're going to be working on some research about dream pets. Is there a pet that you've always wished you could have but maybe it just you know didn't work out yet in your life? Well it's 2021, a new year. So you're going to have a chance in a little bit to do some research about a dream pet and make some notes the KWL way. If you don't know how to do that, don't worry. Miss Olson is about to tell you what we're going to do. And my example today is going to be about goldfish because that's what our story is about a little later on. Okay, let's jump in and get started. KWL stands for what you know already what you're wondering about, and what you've learned. So when you make notes the KWL way, you have three columns. You start by writing down all the things you already know. Then in the middle column, the W, you write down your questions. What have you been wondering about? And then you go and you research. We're going to be researching today with Epic Books and also with Pebble Go. The L is for you to tell us in that third column what you've learned. Little confusing still? It's okay. Hang in there with me. Let's keep moving. All right. I'm going to walk you through this and give you the example of a goldfish. Because I once had a goldfish, I already know, that's the K, I already know some things just from observing or watching the goldfish in its habitat. All right, you may know some things about your dream pet already. Maybe you have a neighbor that's got that same pet. Or maybe you used to have one and something sad happened to it and you wish you had another one. All right, for example, I already know, of course, that goldfish are animals that live in the water. That's a fact that could go in my K column for no. I know that a goldfish has eyes and a mouth. I know that a goldfish has fins and a tail to help it move. Are you getting the point that the K column or the no column can be obvious facts, things that you just know without even barely thinking about it? I know that a goldfish has scales and gills. So when I get ready to take notes on my KWL chart, it's going to look something like this. There's going to be three columns. And the first column is for me to have a place to write down what I already know. And so based on the things I just told you, I know that fish live in the water. I know that fish have eyes and a mouth. I know that fish have fins and a tail to swim. And I know that fish have scales and gills. My next column is where I'm going to put my questions of what I wonder about. So let's keep moving. I wonder, do fish ever close their eyes. I wonder, do fish have teeth? And I wonder what is the difference between scales and gills? Are those just two words that mean the same thing, you know, like rabbit and bunny? It's two different words, but it means the same thing. Or are scales and gills two very different things? All right, so back to my note-taking chart. Those are the things I'm just going to jot down. Here's what I wonder about. Do fish ever close their eyes? Do fish have teeth? Are scales and gills the same thing? So you can see it's very simple. What I'm thinking of, I'm just writing down on my chart. And in our case, we're typing because we're working on this digitally. All right. At this point, before we start filling in the last column, we've got to do some research. You can go to Clever and you can do research on Pebble Go, and I've got the link for you. So it's really easy on your template today. I also have the username and the password in case you need that information. You're going to go and you're going to look up your dream pet and you're going to read about it or have Pebble Go read to you by clicking the speaker. And then you're going to come back to this column and tell me something that you've learned. Now, guys, I've given you many examples on my columns, but on your template, you only have to give me one example for each column, making it easy on you today. All right. So 
This is my resource, my nonfiction book. This is a pet book that I got from Epic. It was written by Felicia Macheski, published by Cherry Lake Publishing in 2018. One of the reasons I love using Epic is because all of their resources are very up to date. You don't get anything that's out of date or that has misinformation or things like that. So on my own time, I went through and I read this book and now I am happy to say that all of the things in my no column were correct. All right. Fish do have eyes and mouths. Fish do have tails and fins. We can learn about them by looking at their habitat. They do have fins. They do have scales. So in reading the book, yep, everything in my no column was correct. I don't have anything that I need to change in that column. But I also didn't find the answers to my questions when I read the first part of the book. So I went all the way to the back and I found this page that says more facts about goldfish. And as I was reading down through the list, I saw number two. Goldfish have teeth in their throat that help them eat. That answers one of my wonder questions. So as I continued reading, I learned that goldfish do have teeth, but they are in the fish's throat instead of its mouth. So that's going to be something that I can write down that I learned in that last column. All right, as I kept reading, number four said goldfish do not have eyelids. Well, that answered another one of my wonder questions because I know they can't close their eyes. How could they close their eyes without eyelids, right? So I also have the answer to that question. But number five didn't really help me. I wasn't curious about pet goldfish in the wild or how many eggs they lay. So I had to keep flipping through my book and I came across a glossary in the back. Now we know that a glossary is like a small dictionary that tells us the meanings of words that are in the book. It also tells us how to spell that word and how to pronounce it. I noticed in the glossary there was the word gills and the word scales. So I thought, well, if I read both of those, maybe it'll help me answer my last wonder question, which was, are they the same thing or are they different? All right, let's read. Gills, a pair of organs near a fish's mouth that help it breathe. Okay, I know what an organ is. An organ is like my heart, my lungs, my brain. So I'm thinking that gills, since they help the fish breathe, it's kind of like my lungs. All right, let's read about scales. Scales are thin, flat pieces of hard skin on a fish that partly cover each other. All right, so when I learned the meanings of these two words, I inferred or I made a guess based on what I've read. I'm making a guess that scales protect the fish's body like skin protects human bodies. I also read that gills help the fish breathe. So, I've got the answer to my last wonder question. No, they are not the same thing at all. So, I'm ready to go back to my chart again. And under here's what I have learned, I can write, do fish ever close their eyes? The answer is no. They don't even have eyelids. My second question was, do fish have teeth? My answer, yes. Their teeth are back down in their throats, but they have them. My last wonder question was, are scales and gills the same thing? Answer, no. The scales cover and protect the fish. The gills make it breathe. So they are not the same. This is exactly what you're going to be doing today, except instead of with a goldfish, you're going to be choosing your dream pet. You're going to be telling me one thing that you know about your dream pet already. You're going to tell me something that you wonder about. And then you're going to the Pebble Go link. You're going to find your pet, read about it, or let Pebble Go read it to you. And then come back to your exit ticket and tell me something that you learned. Hopefully, the answer to your wonder question. All right, guys. 
if you were wanting to share your information with others, this is one way that you could take your KWL notes and you could turn it into a report. This is just one way of sharing your information with others. Sometimes when we share information, we make a video. Sometimes we make a podcast for people to listen to. Other times you make, make a poster or you may make a model or a diorama to show people what you're trying to get across to them. But in this case, I just wrote a little report about goldfish, and it says, Goldfish are animals that live in water. They have fins and a tail to help them swim. Now I'm giving credit to my source, which is always important when you're working on research. I start my paragraph by saying, According to the book Flashy Friends by Maria Kahn, goldfish have some unusual body parts. Hmm. Already I see a problem. Maria Kahn is not the author of that book. I'm going to have to go back and take off Maria Kahn because the credit goes to Felicia Maneski. So I need to fix that. All right. According to the book Flashy Friends by, and it should say Felicia Maneski, goldfish have some unusual body parts. So now I'm going to talk about my wonder questions. For instance, they have eyes without eyelids. They have a mouth, but their teeth are in their throats. You can see that I'm putting this in my own words. I don't want to copy the research directly out of the book. I want to read it, think about it, and then put it in my own words. That way I avoid plagiarism. They also have gills to help them breathe and scales to protect their bodies. Goldfish are interesting to learn about by observing and by reading nonfiction books. And there you can see I closed out my three paragraph paper so that it all makes sense. You do not have to write a paper or make a podcast or a video or share your information today. We're just concentrating on learning how to make the notes. All right, with that being said, now we're going to move on to another part of our lesson today from a totally nonfiction part of the lesson to fiction, but based on true facts. All right, here we are in Arkansas, and the setting for our book is way up here in New York City. I think you're going to enjoy this book, which is also about goldfish. So, let's pretend we're taking a little field trip to New York City. Here we are in New York City together, walking along in Riverview Park. Isn't it beautiful? There's the Hudson River. There's New Jersey over across the river. We're walking around the park that has some beautiful bike paths and walking paths. And now we're coming up to the star of our story, a fountain. Yep, a fountain. This is the Hamilton Fountain. Some of you may have watched Hamilton or you've gone to see the play of Hamilton. Well, this fountain was built by that Hamilton's great-great-grandson. It was built long ago as a way for horses to stop and get a drink of water. Carriages would pull up alongside the fountain and the horses could have a drink before they went on. Roy Hamilton donated this fountain to the city of New York because he just saw a need. He saw a need that the horses needed water. People needed a place to get their um, pets some water. But he also wanted to add something beautiful to that area of the city. Now... Here's a close-up. You can see that some little birds are enjoying the fountain. The water has a plumbing system, so it's always being replenished, so it's nice and clean. And in this story, called Goldfish on Vacation, some children get to help do a very special project, I guess you'd call it, with the fountain. The words from this story are by La Sally Lloyd-Jones, and the pictures are by Leo Espinosa. All right, now remember, this is a fiction book, but it's based on a true story about this New York City fountain. 
The publisher is Schwartz Wade Books and the copyright is 2018. Sometimes it's hard being a goldfish. You dream of growing fat and exploring coral reefs, but instead, oh, here you are in a bowl going round and round in circles. And sometimes it's hard being a child in the summer in the city. All your friends leave and there's no one to play with. You dream of escaping the steamy heat too. But instead, here you are in an apartment going round and round in circles. But sometimes, well, something happens to change all that. Goldfish on Vacation In a small apartment, in a tall round building, by a park, next to a river, in the middle of a big city, there lived three children, H, little O, and baby M. And in a small bowl, next to a lamp, in the middle of a table, beside the curtains, in the small apartment, there lived three goldfish, Barracuda, Patch, and Fis. And no, I don't know which ones are which. An old fountain stood at the end of their street. Does that look familiar? It was broken and covered in ivy. No one used it anymore, except to throw garbage in. But the children thought it was beautiful. On top of the fountain, as if he'd just landed or was about to fly off, a magnificent stone eagle sat with outstretched wings. Grandpa said the same people who built the famous fountain built the famous Grand Central Station. And in the olden days before cars, horses drank from it. But when people got cars, they didn't need horses or the fountain. And they stopped taking care of it. The children felt sad for the fountain and the eagle. Then, one early summer day, a sign appeared. Hamilton Fountain Water Garden, coming in two weeks, calling all goldfish looking for a summer home. Hmm. The children rushed home to tell their fish, you're going on vacation! Barracuda stared with his big fish eyes. This blew big fist bubbles. And Patch sank slowly down to the bottom of the pool, or the bowl. See, H said, they can't wait. Grandpa rushed into the kitchen, and on the big calendar on the wall next to June 28th, he wrote, Goldfish on vacation. But the children didn't need a calendar to remember. They were already counting the days. Every morning they rushed to the window, and so did Grandpa. And every morning they watched a man at the fountain. One morning he was cleaning. Another morning he pulled ivy off the eagle and filled the fountain with clear, cold water. The next morning he was scrubbing and scraping. He put in tall reeds and then lily pads. And then one morning, the children couldn't see him. They couldn't see him because, because of all the children. The children and children and children crowding around him. All of them waiting to drop off their little fish children. It's today, cheered H and little O and baby M. And it was. 
In no time, they were making their way slowly down the big staircase and out the front door, Grandpa leading the way, then Little O with her net and Baby M with the fish food, then H with the bowl and Barracuda and Patch and Fis in a wonderful goldfish parade. Out on the street, everywhere they looked, there were goldfish parents just like them with their goldfish. When at last it was their turn at the fountain, H, Baby M, and Little Old told their fish goodbye and see you soon and don't be homesick. Then the man helped them lower the bowl under water. At first, the fish hung back in the bowl until, bloop, in a flash of light, they darted and were gone. The water shone in the shadow of the eagle's wings, and the children saw glistening in the sunlight, swimming in the clear, cool pool, like sudden glimpses of hidden treasure, fish after golden fish. All through the hot summer, H and little O and baby M stopped to say hello to their goldfish, and so did the other goldfish parents. Soon, all the children looked forward to meeting each other at the fountain. Every day they played together, and every day Grandpa came and put his chair down and chatted with the children who sat and listened. And he told them stories of those hot August days long ago when he was a boy and how all the children who couldn't leave the city would jump and splash in that same fountain. And then the children wished that they were those children jumping in. Before they knew it, it was the end of the summer. The man told the goldfish parents that uh, the only way to catch their fish again was to go in the fountain, to wade into the water with their nets. Woohoo! So all the children took off their sandals and jumped and splashed and laughed in the fountain. And then Grandpa took off his sandals too and rolled up his trousers and paddled in. And he said, it was like those days long ago when he was a boy. And the children could hardly even recognize their goldfish. They looked like completely different fish. Are these really our fish? asked little O as they headed home. Oh yes, I'm absolutely certain they're our fish, said Grandpa, who really wasn't at all absolutely certain that they were. They look so fat and happy, said H. Well, of course, said Grandpa. That's what a vacation will do for you. Anyway, who says you have to leave the city to have a vacation? And the children laughed because, well, they knew it was true. And so the goldfish, who may have been Barracuda and Patch and Fis, or some other goldfish altogether, went back to being fish in a bowl. And the children went back to being children in school. Until the next summer, when Hamilton Fountain would once again be filled with lily pads and reeds and shining water and golden fish. And children. Many, many children. The End well, boys and girls, I hope you liked that story. I sure did. Now that we've finished it, I want you to go do your exit ticket. Remember, this is your KWL chart, and your instructions say type three KWL note, KWL notes about your dream pet. So first thing you're going to do is choose your dream pet. Write your name here, and then it says my dream pet is a blank. If you go down to this link at Pebble Go, it'll give you lots and lots of choices. If you need the username, it's right here for you. 
the W for wood, the R for row, the C for Cummins, the E for elementary, and the S for school. And then the password is research. So this can help you get into PebbleGo anytime you need it. So back to our instructions. Tell me number one in this box for number one, what you already know about your dream pet. Okay, if your dream pet is a giraffe, maybe you already know that guy's got a long neck. So that's what you're going to write. Number two, write what you wonder about. Okay, so number two, you may want to know what that giraffe's normal habitat is. Because how in the world are you going to duplicate that in Conway, Arkansas? But hey, it's your dream pet. you got to figure these things out, right? And then number three, right here, go to Pebble Go to learn more. So if there's a dream pet that's a giraffe, which I'm not saying there is or isn't because I haven't checked, you're going to read about it or click the speaker and let Pebble Go read to you. Go across the tabs at the top so you can get all the information you need. And then hopefully you're going to be able to answer your wonder question right here. Okay. Remember the link is at the bottom. There's your username. There's your password. All right. I've made a special digital sticker of a goldfish that is going to be put somewhere on here after you've done a great job like you usually do. So you can be looking for that later on. Have a great week, guys.